Welcome to Season 1, Noonan Syndrome, Navigating the Challenges and Celebrating the Victories. I'm Angie. And I'm Shauna. We are your co-hosts for this podcast, where we'll be discussing our experiences with Noonan Syndrome, a genetic disorder that affects about 1 in 2,500 people. Although we are not licensed medical professionals, we would like to share our personal experience and research with you. Angie is my mom and Snow's grandma, and I'm Snow's mom. Snow was diagnosed with Noonan syndrome shortly after birth, and we've been navigating this journey together ever since. In this first episode, we'll be talking about our experiences with receiving the diagnosis. It was a difficult time for us, filled with a lot of emotions, questions, and concerns. We will also discuss the medical tests and evaluations involved in the process of diagnosing Noonan syndrome and how we coped with the news. Our hope is that by sharing our story, we can help other families who may be going through a similar experience. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and join us as we share our journey with Noonan syndrome. Snow was born in October of 2016 via C-section. At birth, she weighed seven pounds, 12 ounces, and was 20 inches long. However, during her newborn screening, we discovered that she had a heart murmur, elevated bilirubin, and failed her hearing test twice. She was born with a stork bite on her forehead and neck that has not faded with age. In the first months of her life, we faced many obstacles such as severe reflux, swelling in her feet, and drainage from her belly button. And no medical professional made the connection. She just had a bunch of what we thought were unrelated medical issues. Fast forward six weeks, Snow passed her hearing test with flying colors in December of 2016. Around the same time, we found out that the heart murmur was caused by pulmonary stenosis, and the leakage from her belly button was caused by a patent uracus. When Snow was four months old, we went for a pre-op appointment to have the patent uracus repaired. However, on the day of the appointment, we found out that the uracus had closed on its own and the surgery was canceled. It was a huge relief for us. At that time, Snow was just starting to sleep through the night and she had severe reflux that required her to be propped on a boppy pillow in order to keep her formula down. In February of 2017, Snow's pulmonary stenosis had worsened. Can you tell us more about that? She had to undergo a heart catheterization when she was nine months old. Unfortunately, what was supposed to be an outpatient procedure turned into an overnight stay as she was having trouble clotting at the incision site. At the follow-up appointment with cardiology in August, our doctor mentioned that Snow had valvar and supravalvular pulmonary stenosis, which could indicate she has Noonan syndrome. However, he also warned that labeling her could lead to bullying in school, so we postponed testing. And as we already mentioned, you and your husband made the decision to go ahead and do the testing. It was a difficult decision for us to make, but ultimately we decided to move forward with genetic testing to confirm the diagnosis. We had a lot of questions and concerns about what this would mean for Snow and our family. When you decided to have the testing done, how did you go about doing it? We debated testing for six months before deciding it was better to know for sure. We had to get a referral for testing from the pediatrician, get her cheeks swabbed before waiting another three weeks for the results. The genetic testing confirmed that Snow did indeed have Noonan syndrome caused by a mutation in the PTPN11 gene. It was a relief to finally have a diagnosis, but it also brought up a lot of new questions and concerns about what the future would hold. Thank you for telling us about Snow leading up to her diagnosis. Can you tell us if there is a general way it is diagnosed besides the genetic test? Yes, there are several clinical features and physical characteristics that can be used to diagnose Noonan syndrome in addition to genetic testing. 
Some of the common physical characteristics associated with Noonan syndrome include facial abnormalities, short stature, and chest abnormalities. Other features can include heart defects, feeding difficulties, and developmental delays. What if the specific mutation causing the disorder isn't named? Even if the specific mutation isn't named, a clinical diagnosis can still be made based on the patient's symptoms and family history. However, genetic testing is still recommended to confirm the diagnosis and provide more information for treatment and management. That makes sense. Is there any benefit to not getting an official diagnosis when Noonan syndrome is sus bleh. That makes sense. Is there any benefit to not getting an official diagnosis when Noonan syndrome is suspected? Well, it's always important to have a diagnosis in order to receive appropriate medical care and treatment. Without a diagnosis, there may be a delay in getting the necessary support and management for the individual and their family. So in my personal opinion, there really isn't any benefit to not being diagnosed. Well, we just finished celebrating February as Noonan Syndrome Awareness Month. And this month is Women's History Month. There's a famous woman in the Noonan Syndrome world and her name is Dr. Jackie Noonan. I'm very grateful for her. Dr. Noonan was an American pediatric cardiologist who first described clinical features in children with congenital heart disease, such as short stature, which we now know as Noonan syndrome. She made significant contributions to the field of pediatric cardiology, and her work has helped countless families like ours. That's amazing. So what about the different gene mutations associated with Noonan syndrome? There are actually several gene mutations that have been linked to Noonan syndrome, with the most common one being the PTPN11 gene mutation. Mutations in this gene are the most common cause of Noonan syndrome, accounting for about 50% of cases. Other mutations include RAF1, CRAS, BRAF, and SHOCK2, just to name a few. Wow, that's quite a list. Do you mind telling me what gene mutation SNOW has? Not at all. SNOW's gene mutation is PTPN11 with ML, which stands for multiple lentigens. It used to be called Leopard's syndrome. We will cover more about that topic in a future podcast. Okay, uh, and a quick question. Can Noonan syndrome be diagnosed in vitro or do you have to wait until the child is born? Yes. Uh, Noonan syndrome can be diagnosed in vitro through prenatal testing or pre-implantation genetic diagnosis for families who carry a known Noonan-associated gene mutation or if the doctor were to see something on an ultrasound that made them want the testing done. Interesting. Now, is Noonan syndrome a disease or a disorder? Noonan syndrome is generally considered a disorder rather than a disease. Noonan syndrome is a genetic disorder that affects multiple systems in the body, including the cardiovascular, musculoskeletal, and developmental systems. It's caused by mutations in certain genes that affect normal cellular signaling and growth. While there is no cure for Noonan syndrome, there are various treatments and interventions available to manage symptoms and improve quality of life. So while Noonan syndrome is not a disease in the traditional sense, it is a complex disorder that requires ongoing management and care. Well, you've certainly given us a lot to process today, Shauna. Thank you for providing that clarity. And thank you for joining us today for the first episode of Noonan Syndrome, Navigating the Challenges and Celebrating the Victories. We hope our discussion has provided some insight and support for families who are navigating a Noonan syndrome diagnosis. Remember, you are not alone in this journey. With early diagnosis, appropriate medical care and support, individuals with Noonan syndrome can lead happy and fulfilling lives. We look forward to sharing more about Snow's journey and experiences with you in future episodes. Tune in next week for episode two, titled Treatments. In this episode, we will discuss the various treatments and interventions that have been recommended for Snow's Noonan syndrome. 
If you would like a question addressed in a future episode, you can follow the link in the description. See you next Friday.